Hey everybody, my name is Perry. I'm an electrical engineer and today we're gonna watch The Big Bang Theory season 12 episode 19. This is the episode where like the Nobel Prize comes into like some sort of collision with Amy and Sheldon and the other two imposters and we're gonna see how scientifically accurate that this episode really is. super asymmetry so if anyone's gonna feel like they have imposter syndrome it's us because we're not imposters they are you're imposters and you're frauds <laughs> okay so we're gonna start off with that all right that's that okay scientists do not like to share credit they don't want like they're ingenious to be saturated with a bunch of other names on whatever paper or project they're working on. One of the reasons for that is because the more people that you have on a project or the more names that you have to attach to a final publication, the less any individual is allowed to take credit for in the final product. There's also a dark history about scientists taking credit which they don't actually deserve and it, 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 this, this is not the first time this has happened. There are a decent amount of Nobel Prizes that were awarded to people who did not deserve them. Most of you, I'm sure, have heard of Thomas Edison, how he did not actually invent the light bulb. Rather, it was one of his assistants who actually did it, but the reason that he received the credit for it is because he had the money, and everyone published that like this invention came out of like Edison Technologies or Edison Electric, like whatever the company was called, like his name was attached to it. So his name was on every newspaper everywhere, so they just said, oh, it must be he is the guy that invented it. But really, he, he was the money behind it, and it came from his company, but he did not actually like invent this creation. Watson and Crick became famous because they won the Nobel Prize in 1962 for the discovery of DNA. Unfortunately, they, they, they again, like they were the heads of the project, and they did not actually discover it for themselves. There's a significant amount of credit that should be given to someone who was never talked about. Rosalind Franklin was a chemist who was recruited to King's College in London where she was going to work on the DNA project under Watson and Crick. It was in her notes that she clearly stated the structure of DNA was a double helix. That was the final piece in the puzzle that Watson and Crick were looking for to solidify they found DNA, they know what it looks like, and they know where to get it, and they know what it is. That Nobel Prize was awarded in 1962, and Rosalind Franklin had actually passed away before that date, and one of the rules of the Nobel Prize is that you can't award it to somebody who has passed away. So that's why she didn't receive any of the credit that she truly deserved. Another significant one is Lee Smeitner, and she's like she's a pretty big deal in the physics world. She's the first female professor of physics in Germany. Like, that's a big deal. Around the time that she became a professor in physics was actually during World War II, and being a Jewish person, she fled to Switzerland where she met with another scientist, Otto Hahn, and together their research produced the final paper that proved nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is how the atom bomb works. She was the one to make that discovery. Otto Hahn actually wasn't the worst in this case because while he took the credit for the Nobel Prize, he did nominate Meitner for multiple no Nobel Prize nominations afterwards, but she was never able to win one, unfortunately. Listen up, you have a shot to win a Nobel Prize and you're blowing it. I think what President Siebert is trying to say is that you have a shot to win a Nobel Prize and you're blowing it. <laughs> oh, that's exactly what he said. Uh, well, okay, so first of all, yeah, like, why does every HR person sound like that? Like, I, I, I don't know, but that's beside the point. Obviously, winning a Nobel Prize is a big deal because you get to be in the same league as other scientists who also had that same achievement. But for, I mean, like, right now, most of the world has no idea who won the last Nobel Prize and for what they actually won it for. If you actually win the Nobel Prize, you get a gold coin and a million dollars. That's pretty good. Now, granted, if you are sharing credit, that million dollars is going to be distributed amongst the people that you're sharing credit with, which is another reason scientists don't like to share credit. All the prize money comes from one guy. His name is Alfred Nobel, and the prize is named after him. But like all these millions of dollars, 
it literally it's all coming from like that guy's private bank account right like it's not like the government is paying these scientists or anything like that or like your tax dollars are like no it's all from that dude's private savings alfred nobel got really rich because he created dynamite in the late 1800s and we're still blowing up things today so that patent is still earning him a lot of money every year and his through his investments in like the 1800s like cumulative interest and it just accumulated and all that money he's like a worth a quarter billion maybe a little bit more and we haven't had that many nobel prize winners so every one million dollars that goes to one like there's still plenty of money in his account to give away to future winners not to mention if you actually win this nobel prize and the university can say like our resources help lead these scientists to actually win the prize itself you're going to attract a whole lot more funding and a lot of students are going to want to attend your school because you you want to like who doesn't want to learn physics from einstein Right, like if you had to learn, don't you want to learn from like Richard Feynman or like, I mean, th these people are like huge names. Like obviously you, you're going to choose them over someone you've never heard of. Have either of you done sensory deprivation before? No. Never. Okay, just a heads up. People have different experiences in the tanks. Uh, some people experience perfect calm. Some people sleep. Some people even reported having visions. Okay, but yeah, like these sensory deprivation tanks, I would highly recommend them actually i i, I want to try these myself because i i've only heard good things about them the way that i see these tanks is just like they're pretty much forcing you to meditate i meditate on a daily basis and it's essentially me putting myself in a sensory deprivation environment where like i, I find like a quiet place in the house and i'll close my eyes so like my, my, my hearing is controlled because it's quiet my vision is controlled because my eyes are closed my sense of touch is controlled because i'm not moving and all of these things are happening inside of this sensory deprivation tank as well it's just this way like you're forced into it whereas like the other like traditional way of meditation you have to kind of like get yourself into the zone of it the water inside that tank has a very high level of salinity so you can't sink in that thing even if you tried it's like the dead sea like even if you wanted to get to the bottom like it'll naturally float you up like whether you're like inhaling exhaling or like whatever you're you're not gonna sink in that water i wonder if anyone's like peed in one of those and how they would actually filter that out that's that's gross you winning a nobel prize would be an inspiration to all women all women amy and you're blowing it i was gonna be a scientist but since you lost i'm just gonna give makeup tutorials on youtube whoa that's Whoa, okay, that, that's a lot of pressure to put on somebody. That is a lot of pressure to put on like any woman or any person in general, where it's like you are like the sole representative of like your group. I mean, like the, the whole thing about Nobel Prizes is that they benefit everybody. Like the people who discovered DNA, it's not like they they hoard that information. Like it's released for everyone. So as much as like you want to take credit or don't, the information itself is far more valuable than that million dollars that you receive or the fancy status that you get from winning a Nobel Prize. I also realized that the two examples I gave of people not getting the credit they deserved were two female scientists and it's th that was by pure coincidence I didn't actually plan to do that and I don't I don't want to dissuade any woman or anybody in general from not entering a STEM field, we absolutely need more engineers and more scientists, not less. But to highlight some achievements that some incredible female scientists have had, like, oh, actually, yeah, the, the person who plays Amy in The Big Bang Theory, she has a PhD in neuroscience. Like, she, she's literally playing herself, like, a little more eccentric, like, in the show. The only thing that's better than winning one Nobel Prize is winning two. And one of the people who did that was Madame Curie. So I don't want to create like some sort of illusion or lie that women never receive credit. Madame Curie won two Nobel Prizes, one in physics, one in chemistry. She's the reason that we have x-rays in hospitals today. Like that woman is one of my heroes and she's absolutely incredible. Like, like she should be in textbooks everywhere. And it, it, this is a little bit of comfort knowing that if you're in the world of science, You've heard of Madame Curie. Like, she truly is an amazing, amazing scientist.
Thank you guys so much for watching. That was a little bit of a weirder episode. I'm not sure like what the takeaway is from that, but let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about it. Guess what? The Gold Life is now an affiliate partner of NordVPN. Information is a huge commodity nowadays. Companies want to know where you live, where your cars park, what you eat, where you work, where you work out, the passwords you have, the websites you're on. Your personal information is being bought and sold by these giant tech companies without your permission. Protect yourself at all times on up to six devices using NordVPN. I have it on my laptop and my phone. That way whenever I go connect to a public Wi-Fi anywhere, I don't have to worry about a thing. Another cool deal is that you get to connect to other countries and get access to their Netflix movies and TV shows, giving you a whole new array of entertainment so you can binge even harder. Use my link in the description down below to get 68% off a two-year plan of NordVPN with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.